you're doing any transcriptions, whether they're short in the middle of an audio conversation or whether you've got hour long YouTube videos to process, faster is better. And not only faster, but if you can get it cheaper, all the better as well. So today I, I wanted to show you how I've started doing transcriptions that are 10 times faster, up to 10 times faster than when I was using the uh, OpenAI Whisper uh, module. Now, uh, I'm gonna show you everything in this video. I'm gonna explain uh, how we do transcriptions, um, not just transcriptions inside Make, but if you're a software programmer, how you can do transcriptions, um, why it's 10 times faster, and, and how to use it. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. If that's useful to you, definitely stick around. Um, this is exciting stuff. Now, what are transcriptions? Transcriptions are where we take uh, audio text and we pull out uh, all the spoken words in it. Uh, even better if we can get um, the words lined up to timestamps, um, because then we can use it for closed captions, subtitles, uh, and do other things. And of course, then we can do other things like process. We can perhaps generate uh, chapter headings. Or, or other assessments of what's in the audio. The transcriptions are, are super, super wonderful. And we're all very lucky because a couple of years ago, OpenAI, who had uh, stopped releasing models, um, actually released a new model uh, publicly called Whisper. And Whisper was fantastic. Whisper allowed us to do this transcription. Um, we could also do it on a laptop. Uh, a huge ecosystem evolved around making it work in all the different places, on all the different hardware, making it faster, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So OpenAI uh, haven't uh, iterated on the project uh, in a little while. Uh, haven't done a release since late last year. It's now middle of, of 2024, and that's fine because you know we can see that they're working towards their multimodal uh, models. But for the rest of us, we get to use Whisper. You can use it on OpenAI's own API, and that's a lot of letters. Um, and you can pay them a little bit of money. And uh, as we've seen in the statistics, um, certain video, these, these videos that are 10 times faster on, uh, on you know, or 10 times slower on AI uh, are only five minutes. Um, so the longer the video, you know, you can see these 10 times improvements or even three times, anything. Look, even 20% faster is better than, than nothing. But uh, obviously 10 times is fantastic. So the WISP model was free. Uh, anyone can run it. You can see it running on Hugging Face. Um, but where we got the 10x speed ups was on a company called Grok, uh, which is G-R-O-Q. Grok make their own hardware. So the reason they're faster is because they rebuilt the entire stack. Now, the people that started Grok, they are the people that created the Google TPU chips. Um, and then uh, they sort of left and, uh, and were given money to go off and do this from scratch. And they basically went through the whole supply chain of how you make chips, um, how you write software, um, focused on one job, and that is inference. Inference is where we use model. In the bit like the difference between making a computer and using a computer, um, so in, in large language models do we have the difference between training a model and using it, and in using it, it's called inference. So Grok's speciality is inference and doing inference incredibly fast. Uh, they came out with a public console where you can play with it, a chat with it, a bit like ChatGPT, and you can see they like to advertise just how fast it is, like 800, 1200 tokens a second down the page. And a month or so ago, they added Whisper to their uh, catalog of, of models that you can use. And that's what we're going to use today. We're going to use OpenAI's Whisper model, but running on Grok's hardware, um, and uh, with with an API that looks like this. But let's forget about APIs. Let's just play with this thing and see whether it's any good. Now it is the same as Whisper. We know Whisper's good. So if you go to the playground um, and you see that uh, the drop-down list here has got all the different text models, but if you scroll down to the bottom you'll see the Whisper uh, large V3. This is what we want. We want to be able to select a file, um, pick, pick a file, and we'll press Submit. That's the transcribing, and here is the text. Now, I like this little bit of audio uh, because it's wrong in the transcription. And wrong is fine because I can fix wrong. So we're going to fix wrong. And the way we fix this is, uh, and that's another thing I like about the Whisper model, is that we can provide a system prompt. 
The system prompt is used to help the transcription. And when you discover this, it's like, oh my God, I can, I can do all sorts of things. Uh, but at least I can fix spelling. Now I like to, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I have an Australian accent. I'm not 100% sure whether this helps. I'd just like to be open and honest about why it's struggling. I use the following words. Dr. Nick, Okra, and uh, I found that it's helpful to tell it how to spell Brock, otherwise it comes up with other spellings. And so now if we press submit, you see that it now spells Dr. Nick correctly, spells Mokra correctly, and this is fantastic. If you've got your own uh, business language, technical language, uh, bad pronunciation, you can iteratively improve your system prompts so that all your transcriptions get better. Just incredible, love this a lot. So now the question becomes, how do we bring this into our code or, uh, or for the rest of this video, how do we bring it into our make uh, automations? I allow me to draw your attention to the view code panel because it is wrong. It's wrong, don't use it. This is currently, as of time recording, wrong. Uh, everything in here is for all the other models, the text-based models, the chat completion models. Um, and unfortunately, the person in charge hasn't uh, implemented it for uh, Whisper. So that's fine, I just want to point it out. A couple of things that are wrong. One, the API is wrong. And two, we're not going to use a JSON object to, to configure this thing um, because we need to also upload a file. And in the wonderful world of the internet, we need to do that a different way. Uh, and you might therefore be wondering, well, how do we do it the other way? If we switch over to the documentation, you'll see uh, this is how you might do this, uh, this little curl command. It's the foundation of the whole internet, apparently. Um, but if you're not a technical person, don't worry so much as to, to spot that these are the keys, the values we need to put in, which I'll show you shortly. And that it's uh, what we're looking to use is the method of, of parameters called form data. And I'll show you this another way. If we go here to view developer uh, JavaScript console, switch over to the network tab. Yes. And now let's uh, press submit one more time. Down here, we see under XHR, click on that. And just make that bigger. We can see the form data that was prepared. Uh, we can see our response. This is high on Dr. Nick, I work for Mokra. Uh, we can see the form data that was passed in, our prompt, the model, uh, some other configuration, and our file. And we can see the API that we need to use. So we have two ways to find out how this thing works. One is the documentation. The other is to watch it. Browser. So that's great. So then the question becomes, how do we do this? How do we replace the OpenAI Whisper module with our own implementation? Stick around what we're going to do. Let's create a new scenario so we have a happy place to, to, to work. Now, let's go back a step. If you've never done any transcriptions and I've, I'm busy telling you not to use the OpenAI module, you might be wondering, well, what is it? Why am I keeping secrets? Uh, under, uh, if we search for OpenAI, you'll see that there is a collection of modules and if we search for Whisper, you'll see that there are two for Whisper. One does translations from uh, into English or back and forth to other things. Uh, and we want transcription, which is going to take audio into text. Uh, and then you would uh, fill this in. And we will do this again shortly, but uh, this is our system prompt. We're not going to do that right now. First, we are going to use um, there is no Grok module yet. I think I saw that someone's got a paid one, but when you've watched this video, you'll see that that's not necessary. We're going to make an API, we're going to do an HP request and make an API key for request. And that URL, let's, we'll do the key in a second. Let's, let's map over some of these things we learned. So we want this API. It was a post and the important part, in order for us to upload a file, we need multi-part form data. Multi-part being part data, part file. That's my interpretation of it anyway. And uh, the reason for that is we now get two different types of, of fields that we can pass. Text, for example, um, model whisper large v3. 
So the, the key is model, the value is whisper v3. And the other one we want is called file. We're going to do that very shortly. Let me just press OK. That is not going to save because I have credentials. So, how do we get credentials? Uh, I already have them, which is lovely for me. But for you, you will want to create a uh, grok. Oops. You want to create a uh, grok. Call it whatever you like. Now, the key what goes in here? We go back to their uh, console. You've logged in, you've created an account. Uh, you head over to API keys, create a key, and you'll get the value. And then when you come back, we need to make this authorization. And this one will be bearer and then space and then that key to take. And that's what a key looks like for Grok um, and for many other things. Authorization, bearer, and you'll have you're ready to use Grok for the rest of your life. It's gonna be great. So now I can press save. Excellent. Now I need to do a couple of things. One is to flesh out the rest of those fields, and second is to pass in the file. So let's get the file. We can't do much audio processing. We don't actually have any add module. I've put my audio on Google Drive. Ignore that for the moment, fix that. Um, I will select it from a list. Tutorials, audio, that file I was was my name. Let that out. Unlink that. Move this. This is the little trigger for where the scenario starts when you will it run. See that it fetched that file. A lot of metadata that uh, we don't need. The important thing down here is this data. Um, this uh, this is the file that we can now upload. So we've pulled it in. Uh, we've pulled it in from Google Drive, and now we're going to upload it to, um, to, to, to Grok. So let's link that across. Oops, format that nicely. And so now we can link it. Let's add type file. Now the key was called file, so it's type file and key file, that's very convenient. And this is that little Bing, that, that makes me so happy. Like make.com knows that inside the response from the Google Drive was a file object. And so it naturally makes that easy for us to pull in. That's lovely. All right, we have a couple of other text fields. I'm just going to move that to the top for reasons that just make it. So the file will be first, then the model. Uh, now we have some other text ones to fill in. Uh, we have the prompt. Let's just copy my prompt in. Call prompt value is that one. Uh, there was one called temperature. Now the value said zero, but I, I, I found that that's not a valid value. And there's an optional field for language. I know that mine's English, so let's help that. Out. And then we'll pass the response. Rename this Brock Whisper. Let's run that. Downloaded the file, it's now uploaded to Whisper. We've got our response. We get a 200, which is a good number. And there is my transcript. Now we haven't got the segments that you might use for, um, uh, for subtitles. Um, that comes from this key here, the response format for both JSON. So let's pop that in. Scroll down and add that text. Key is response format. The value is verbose JSON. Run that one more time. Now in the data blob, we can see not only is the text, but also a new key called segments. And uh, hardly worth the effort on this small piece of text. There's only one segment, but a larger piece. All right, let's save that. So this is exciting. But now I've said that this is fast time. We want to look at the times comparison between the Grok implementation of Whisper and OpenAI's uh, API as it stands right now. Obviously, everything could change. 
but we need to know how fast. Now, as far as I can tell, there is no way to ask a module how fast you just did the thing you just did. Um, therefore, we'll have to do the math ourselves. We will set variable to start time. I'll call it proper start time. And uh, what we want to track is, is the start time. Now, under uh, the Google Calendar icon, there is a variable called now. I'll pop that in there. By the way, um, now is just a, a double quotes with the word now inside it. So um, once you start to know what's, what's available to you, you can actually type them in. Rock, start time. Excellent. And now we can get variable, set variable. Rock total time. We want to do a little bit of maths. We want the current time. And then uh, we can't just type minus. Heaven forbid. Uh, we do need to use the operator minus, which, just like now, is just the minus sign inside curly brackets. So I could have done that. Just to recap, I can type curly brackets now, curly brackets minus, and finally, we are going to subtract from the start time. So the current time minus the start time will be our duration. Email. Well, let's run this one more time and we'll see how long it took Whisper to process. Just over half a second, 572 milliseconds to process that. That seems like some time, small bit. The question then becomes, well, how much faster is that than OpenAI? Well, we want to take that same video and process it twice. Let's add a router. And we'll just clone these things. So I'll pop that one there. Leave that. Rename OpenAI. Uh, that's still correct. We just want to calculate the time. That, so because it'll go through this route first, and then come and do this route. So we'll have different start times. Um, and then we'll clone this one. And then open. Really should not have bothered with it. And change that to. All right, so now minus open AI start time. So it's not doing anything yet. So let us add in, oops, right click. I'm attempting to right click and doing it poorly. Add a module, open AI, whisper, description. Automatically finds the file, which is fantastic. The system prompt will be the same as our system prompt for here. And uh, in order to get the uh, segments uh, that you can use for subtitles, we want to pick a verbose JSON. Should be fine. Rename it to Open AI Whisper. Reformat. Let's run this. Hey, right. see what times we get: seven hundred and twenty-one milliseconds and four hundred. So in this case. Uh, for this tiny file, OpenAI was faster. Understandable, I think, Grok, uh, there's a time obviously allocated to the queuing um, plus the processing time. So maybe it's uh, fairer uh, to, as a test, find a larger file. And uh, it's five minute audio. Uh, let's see how long this takes. Take longer to download, longer to upload, longer to process. So this also includes the uploading time there. Uh, it took four seconds to, uh, to transcribe on Grok. I remember this is the same model, um, but uh, different hardware. Oh, no. So four seconds, 10 times four seconds would be 40 seconds. So let's see what this comes out to, comparing to the four seconds of Grok. 
There's another way of saying, I have to say nonsense for 40 seconds while we wait. And it came out to 34 seconds. So 34, um, you know, 90, 90%, so nine times slower. Let me give this a name, uh, speed test with Brock Whisper. Um, and I'll uh, download that uh, so that you can uh, plug this yourself. And then you'll be able to copy and paste this and use it. On. However you're doing your transcriptions, uh, that's great. It is important to know there are fast and cheaper options. And then it wasn't that much work to implement um, the Grok over the open AI. Um, we, all we had is a different URL, which is actually very similar. And we had to explicitly pass in the input fields. But once you've done this once, you can clone it, copy it, I can copy it. Uh, I can go to another module and copy it between modules because when you copy these things, they are just bits of text. So I'm in a new one, and I'll just paste it and Delete that, and I'm now good to go. So once you've done it once, it's easy to copy and paste amongst your other scenarios. Just wire it up. So that was Grok running uh, uh, the Whisper model. Uh, keep an eye out for Grok. I think what they're doing is incredible, and uh, I hope you have a great time transcribing videos. And I'll see you in the next video.